Hi, welcome back. This is the second part of the windy and warm tutorial. In the first part, we had a look at the verse and the first bridge. In this part, we'll be having a closer look at the second bridge, the third bridge, as well as the ending. We're punching back into the video right before the summary of the first bridge, so you have a little bit of context where we are going. Have fun, see you next time. Bye bye. can hear we're launching straight into the next verse which is again complete repetition of the first two verses we played third verse. Now the thing is different compared to the first two verses. Maybe you noticed I tried to add in the pinky one time, the ring finger the other time, uh, letting that downward bend, that, that releasing bend sound out sometimes, so you can get an, an ear for all those different variations in the song. On to bridge number two. This is something I hope I'm going to do this right because when checking the Tommy Emanuel recordings for this tutorial, I noticed that I played something completely different here. I think I maybe have played the Chet Atkins version, version for years. So this is what Tommy plays. The good thing is it's actually easier than what Chet played. Here we go. <laughs> back to the next first section. Now the, this little bridge, the second bridge, is built around four different or five different chords. You're starting out with a G dominant seventh chord, to a C dominant seventh chord, to an F chord, to D minor, and again E dominant seven to finish things off. If you look at the bass pattern, on the G chord, Tommy is sticking to two strings, the low E string and the D string. On the C chord, he's switching to three strings, the second string, the A string, to the D string, to the E string and the D string, so... On the F chord, he's back to using two strings, Again, only the low E string and the D string. Then the D minor chord and the E chord are both played open without an alternating thumb uh, going in between them. Uh, now, the melody over the G chord and the melody over the C chord is the exact same thing with one tricky slide going up. So, and you really have to time that out correctly with the bass line. You're starting out on the fourth beat of the previous bar with an F sharp chord sliding up to the G chord. So one, two, three. So I'm going to build up the melody beat by beat again. Let's start with the first two beats. That's beat one and two. Let me add in the third beat. Now let me add in the fourth beat and this is where that little slide will pop in. See? So as you slide up, if you arrive at the sixth fret, that should be at the exact same time where you're playing the low G bass note. might be necessary to practice that separately. So just that slide going up, timing it out with the bass line. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just to make sure you get that right. With the rest of the melody included.
That's the full melody. Let me add in the second beat of the second bar. See, so and you're just moving that pinky straight away back to the fifth fret. One, two, three, four. Moving to the third beat. Moving from the fifth fret on the high E string to the fifth fret on the B string, giving you a G sixth chord. Ending up on a last G chord right in front of the first beat. Two, three, four. And then you're moving to the C chord. Now the good news is the melody on top is the exact same thing on the C chord. It's the exact same thing. The pinky is doing all the work. The only thing you need to uh, watch out for is the bass line is now moving between three strings instead of moving between two strings. That's something to, to pay some extra attention to. The bass pattern is three strings now. And while it was before only low E string and the D string. And just as you play that very last G in the uh, second bar over the G chord, you will now have this little snappy F chord again right in front of the first beat. And then the first beat with the bass note. Really slowly. And then we're moving to an F chord. Three, four. Again, I'm playing this as well as Tommy with the thumb over the side of the neck. Again, in this case, you don't actually need the thumb. You could play it just with a complete bar. This is how it sounds like with the thumb. Three, four. And this is how it sounds like with a bar. So now the thing has changed, the exact same techniques, all the hammer-ons, pull-offs, everything you need to do is there. So you have the choice, either the bar chord or the thumb over the side of the neck. Then let me maybe pick that F shape a little bit more apart. So you, you've played that uh, very last melody note when transferring from the C chord. One more time. So, so it's maybe i don't have to have to mention this but if you transfer to the thumb then you can play this as a little bar if you want to play the f chord using a full bar then you have to play this little bar chord right away with the full bar straight to the full bar for the rest of the f chord let's first let's take a look at that first so just full F chord together on the second beat. Three, four, one, two, three. And then a pull off initiated between, in between the bass notes. And as you pull off, you should land on the D bass note. Moving to an F added ninth chord. Second bar. Let's have a look at that second bar as well. So you're ending up on that F added ninth chord shape. Three, four. So you're going from that F added ninth back to a regular F chord. two F bars back to back, three, four, then 
then moving to a D minor chord. That's all that happens again as we saw in the first bridge, moving to a D minor chord, removing the first fret for an open uh, E string, but we're keeping the rest of the chord down. So you get a bit of a clash between that D on the third fret of the B string and that high E string. Moving to an E dominant seventh chord yet again. Now we're not playing the low E string, we're sticking to the bass note on the D string. Leave the chord ringing out as you play the descending bass line. And we're straight back into the first. One more time, those last four bars, and then I'm gonna put everything together and play the second bridge in its entirety. So, from starting from the F chord, two, three, four. And back off. Now, one more time, the second bridge in full, then it's on to the next section. into the next verse. The fourth verse again is an exact repetition apart from one little chord change all the way at the end. Let me go through it. Did you spot it? That very last E minor chord has now become a G chord. So up until now we always played back to the A minor chord. So we used an E minor chord all this time, now we're moving to a G chord. Tommy doesn't do this always. Sometimes he'll, he changes to the G chord, sometimes he doesn't, but it really adds a really nice variation. It's really subtle to most people. It doesn't really stick out that much, but it's a really nice twist, just changing that E minor chord to a G chord every now and then. So one more time. And then we're moving into the third bridge. This is the one with the most action, so let me go over it one time and then all the explanation will follow. into the last verse. Now, there's a lot going on here. This is where all the action is. So we're starting out with basically the same trick we did in the second bridge with that slide from an F sharp moving up to G. Now we're starting with an A flat chord. We're trying not to play the open A bass string, sliding up to the second fret to a full A chord, really slowly. That's the melody for the first bar just a little bar with the first finger across the second fret, pinky on the fifth fret on the high E string, and then the middle finger for the third fret also on the high E string. Then in the second bar, this really sneaky technique is passing by or, or really sneaky fingering. You're playing an E note two times, but you're doing it on different strings. Moving with the pinky to the fifth fret on the B string, and then you're lifting up the bar so you can play an additional open E string underneath. So pulling off to 
the second fret of the bar, lifting up the bar to get an open E string underneath. Those two bars back to back. One, two, three. And again the same chromatic move from the first fret to the second fret. One more time, those two bars. One, two, three, four. Same melody. So the third bar, first bar and the third bar, the exact same thing. One, two, three. That's something else. So th that's, again, uh, fingering that goes by rather quickly, sliding up with the pinky to the ninth fret, but you're aiming to, to get a bar at the fifth fret down as quickly as possible. And again, you're leaving out that bar yet again to get an open E string. Really slowly. So it might be that your hands aren't big enough to get that slide in to the ninth fret while keeping down that bar chord at the fifth fret. Then pick up the slide first and then transfer to the bar really quickly. See, so I'm doing this really purpose purposefully now, just or really with really the intention of showing you that you can pull off this slide and then go back for the bar without really missing anything. Really slowly one last time. So those four bars back to back. One, two, three. Same trick, down uh, one half step, sliding up a voicing for again an A dominant 7th chord. So what you get is a little bar across the D string, G string and B string, adding in the middle finger on the 5th fret and then sliding that up to the 5th fret. So sliding that up a half step to an A dominant 7th chord. First bar. Keeping down that uh, dominant A7 chord, so a bar at the 5th fret with nothing but the middle finger on the 6th fret on the G string. And the same move yet again, lifting out the bar so you can get a, create an open E string underneath. Again, open E string. Again, uh, a chromatic move. This is uh, what I think an E flat dominant seventh chord with the fifth in the bass moving up a half step to an E dominant seventh chord. Again, Tommy is playing this with the thumb over the side of the neck, but it's perfectly possible to switch this around instead of playing this thumb, index finger, pinky, to play this, for instance, index finger, middle finger, pinky, and you don't have to use the thumb over the side of the neck. So coming from that A chord, that's the version with a thumb, without the thumb. Exact same thing, but we lost the thumb, we switched over to the index finger and the middle finger. So again, if the thumb gives you difficulties, then there's no reason to use it, you can swap it out for something else here. Let me play those first bars back to back now, up until this point, or maybe let me include this little chord section as well. You're ending up on 6th fret, or with the thumb, 6th fret on the low E string, 6th fret on the G string, pinky on the 8th fret of the B string and you're moving that up one fret. Again moving for an 
open E string as well. So you have to get your posture nice upright to make sure that if you play this chord, that open E string can still sound out underneath it. So you don't get this, but... And it's that open E string that will actually bind the next chord changes together because you will be moving up and down the neck quite a lot. And it's all moving around an E chord. So you're starting out with an E chord. So you get that half step up, open E string, then to an E chord with a G sharp in the bass. And again, the same thing, you play the chord and then you play an open E string on top of it, moving to a full E chord down below. And a chromatic bass line starting on the F sharp, G, G, going back up to an A chord. One more time, that chord section. As you can hear, hopefully, that open E string actually rings out while you are switching to the other chords. This is what binds the whole movement together. Let me play the bridge all the way up until this point. One, two, three. That's the next section. Starting on an A chord, moving to a B minor 7th chord, but we're not playing the full chord, only the strings we need. To a C diminished chord, but again, only the, the strings we need, not a full sounding chord. And you're playing a little pull off in the bass note. And then sometimes Tommy likes to add in the, the next chord in front of the beat, you're moving to an A chord with a C sharp in the bass. And again, that same pull off in the bass line. If you want to keep it the same thing the whole way through, then it sounds like this. Each chord on the beat. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four. Then it's each chord on the beat. If you want to anticipate that very last chord, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's the only difference. Just that one chord is pushed in front of the third beat instead of on the third beat. One more time, the chord section. This is a D dominant ninth chord, bar with the ring finger across the fifth fret on the high E, D string and G string, index finger, fourth fret on the D string, middle finger, fifth fret on the A string. The rhythm you use on this chord can be different each time through. Or that's what I think I know that down in the tab, but it could also just be a percussive hit just as well. So don't stick too closely to the rhythm that's in the tablature down below or, or that you hear on some version, uh, I or Tommy or Chet Atkins played. Uh, just play whatever feels right for you. So a few possibilities. That's one, the strumming or the strumming with a tap. Good. It all works perfectly, so just have a pick and see what works for you. Then, the cool part, or the, the part that will usually turn a few heads, that uh, diminished run all the way up the neck. Now, luckily, this isn't that difficult in terms of fingering. You're starting out with a diminished chord with the root on the fifth string. And the, the trick of getting that bouncy rhythm is in the thumb. The first two notes of this lick are always played with a thumb pick and the chord is with the middle finger and the index finger. Mm -hmm. 
Once that works, you're moving to the fourth string, then you get this as a chord voicing. So index finger, fourth fret, ring finger, fifth fret, middle finger, fourth fret, it, pinky, fifth fret, really symmetrical shape. And we're always starting from an open D string. And as I said, first two notes with a thumb pick, 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 fingers. Now you're going to move this chord shape up three frets. Two times in a row. So starting on the fourth fret, seventh fret, tenth fret. Back to back with that first chord. And the key here is playing this lightly. Don't dig in with the thumb on those bass notes. Just play everything really, really lightly. And really snap those last chords, make them really short so you can move up the neck right away. There's no need to play this legato, there's no need to bind everything together. It's really short and snappy. It takes some time to memorize those three fret jumps, but since the fingering remains the same all the way through, you will pr probably find that this, although it sounds really flashy, isn't the hardest part about the song at all. Moving to that same dominant ninth chord on the eighth fret, giving you an F chord, and then moving down one fret to an E dominant ninth chord. Open E string. Usually Tommy plays this really short muted right away. And that little blue slick. Again, open E string, fourth fret, really clashing. It's a semitone apart, sliding up to the fifth fret. In ring finger, seventh fret, index finger, fifth fret. Ring finger to the 7th fret on the A string, index finger 5th fret on the D string, middle finger, and then back to an open G string to head back into the next verse. Now, one more time, starting from that chord section. You have the whole song down now. There's just a few little variations we have to address at the end of the song and you're all there. One more time, the third bridge really slowly and then it's straight to the end. One, two, three. to the last first. Back to that G chord and repeating. And this, that's basically the ending. So you're playing that variation on the G chord. Repeating a few times. Tommy sometimes likes to add in a variation in thirds as well. And then as soon as you're ready to end the song, That's the, the simplest way to end the song with a little bend on that third fret and done. One more time, that ending a bit slower and then you're all the way through Windy and Warm. So 
there you go. That's when the oil warm all the way through for you. I hope you have fun with this one. See you next time for another Tommy Emanuel tutorial. Take care. Bye bye.